Hey, how's it going, people? Early stream because I'm busy today, but anyway. Um, with me today is my friend Ju Tyrannus, aka Yoakim. Um, Three one. This is technically his first time on the stream, so I don't know. You want to introduce yourself, Yoakim? Give a little background. Uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, hey everyone, my name is Yoakim, known as Ju Tyrannus on Instagram. I like to draw cartoons of animals, dinosaurs, and prehistoric wildlife. Uh, I studied, I've studied both film production and classical animation in Vancouver Film School. Um, and I'm half Finnish, half Mexican. Uh, I think that's a pretty good summary of who and what I am. He's both so bland he, and spicy. No, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I'm both, I'm both vodka and tequila. Exactly. Wait, is that a normal thing to eat in, to, not to eat, to drink in Finland? Vodka? Yes. Yes, it's vodka is extreme. Just Northern Europe in general is just vodka. I guess, I guess that, that makes sense. In Finland, we have our own version of vodka called uh, Koskenkorn. Uh-huh. Basically, uh, like historic, basically bootleg vodka, like drink prohibition. Mm -hmm. Finns started making their own <laughs> like, distilled liquor. Moonshine? Yeah, no, I get what you mean. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Koskenkorn is basically like Arquil and Moonshine. Uh-huh. So, Joachim, what's your, what's yeah. your dinosaur origin story how'd you get into drawing dinosaurs and stuff oh um it has to do with you know how i um started drawing so what are we because even drawing today to... i'm sorry i didn't mean to interrupt you i just want to explain what we're drawing so like you're working on the personal piece maybe i will post enough of it but mm -hmm. i'm been practicing and drawing a lot of utah raptors lately Mm -hmm. And this is a sketch of a Utah raptor chasing the primitive uh, Therosinosaur Falcarius, cool. which coexisted with Utah raptor, mm -hmm. the early Cretaceous. I'm yeah. and I'm um, working on the Platyosaurus comic, which will come June, July. But if you're sometime on sometime in the near future, yeah, sometime in the near future. But if you're on Patreon, it comes way earlier. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. So anyway, yeah, go keep keep going. What was your your dinosaur origin story? Yeah, yeah, it has to do with when I started to draw, or like how I learned to draw. Because as soon as I learned to draw and how to draw, um, I started drawing animals, eventually dinosaurs. Uh huh. And I say that because when I was a kid, like a toddler, well, not anymore a toddler, but when I was like around five mm -hmm. i couldn't actually hold a pencil or a pen i really struggled with it uh -huh. and my parents were worried because they were worried you know about school whether i'd be able to write or take or whatever you know uh, and so my dad he went to the dollar store and bought you know, a whiteboard and some whiteboard markers mm -hmm. and he started uh, laying some dots and had and he would have me connect the dots with the markers mm -hmm. and that's how I learned to hold the pen and at first it would be ladders houses that you know by connecting the dots I would end up drawing houses and ladders but eventually my dad upped it up like a bunch and I started and by connecting the dots I was suddenly drawing like monsters and animals and I became really obsessed with it like oh Dang. If I if I just lay these lines, I can I can create life. Mm -hmm. I can you know and I can create that life. Yes, I can create a creature from my mind. Uh huh. And that's how it really all started. I, when did I started to draw dinosaurs specifically? That I don't I don't have a satisfying answer for that. That's very. But it was it was very soon after when I learned. After I learned to draw, what kind of what kind of monsters were you drawing? Oh, just not even cool monsters. Like my dad's like sketch of a monster that I would end up drawing was like just like a big 
big humanoid blob with a mouth and pockets for some reason. Mm -hmm. For some reason, uh, <laughs> the monsters. I have a vivid memory of my dad, like laying after I finished drawing the monster. My dad laid some extra dots, had me connect them. He'd be like, "Nice, Joachim. You drew pockets for the monster." You drew pockets for the <laughs> monster. Like, <laughs> or like, I don't know, a pouch. Maybe it's a most, maybe it's a marsupial. Maybe this whole, maybe I learned to draw by drawing marsupials. <laughs> You're drawing kangaroos and calling them monsters. <laughs> That's. I mean, for a fin, you know, a kangaroo is kind of. There's absolutely, no such. It's terrifying. There's no. Uh, yeah, there's no equivalent to kangaroos in northern Europe, so that's kind of a monster. I'm pretty sure there's no equivalent to kangaroos anywhere in the world, except for Australia. <laughs> that's true. I mean, maybe like those mice, like like those mice that, or gerboas, like, you know those rodents that have like really long legs? Mm -hmm. That's that's really the closest thing to a kangaroo. Mm -hmm. That is in the marsupial. That makes sense. I see. Yeah, just like gerboas, gerbils. Whatever they're called. Yeah. No, no, Whatever no. animals are called these days. Jerboas, kangaroo rats. No, I, I agree. Yeah. I feel it. Aren't kangaroo rats though marsupials? Uh, I thought they were just rats. This has been another uh, question session. Rodent question session. Featuring your Tyrannus and Capitals or Comics. Mm -hmm. Subscribe for more questions Subscribe about for rodent. More questions. More questions that you might want to ask yourself. Questions that we will not provide answers for. We will mm -hmm. just ask, is this a rat or a marsupial? Send your pictures. Send your pictures now. Well, yeah, no, that's that's interesting. So I didn't know. I, I forgot I, I forgot if you even told me that story that your dad made you, like, connect the dots and stuff. Um, yeah. What, what I, I think I brought it kid, up in the... Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, go ahead. You brought it up when? I brought it up, like, uh, when we first tried to record and we had some Oh, what do you mean? We've never recorded this. <laughs> yeah, no, we tried to record a while ago, and then there was some a bunch of technical issues. So technically, we're this is Joachim's second time. Um, yes, I think. But that first, to be fair, that fir that first time was um, that was off stream. That was like offline. We we're trying to like get it to work right, and that's for whatever fair. reason, so yeah, nothing my, was working. This might not be my first podcast. But this is certainly my first live stream. That's true. That's true. That's facts. Anyways, you were talking about your, you know, drawing origin story. Um, I mean, I've always, I've always drawn stuff. Um, have you? I forget if I've even mentioned this on stream. I mean, I, when I was a kid, um, because my brother was a graphic design student, so basically I would just, you know, watch him draw, and because of that, I wanted to draw. And, you know, I, I like dragons. Oh, so, yeah, I was very heavily influenced by, like, you know, anime and, like, video games. Yeah. And Final Fantasy. Final Fantasy, especially, I think, was a big one. I drew a lot of, like, anime shit. <laughs> you know, essentially, there's a lot of anime stuff. And then, like, you know, cartoons. That's where we... That's the big one where our origin stories differ. Different. <laughs> Diverge. <laughs> you weren't exposed to, like, a lot of anime? I, I, I never uh, watched anime heavily as a kid. I was a Disney kid. And Western cartoon kid. Well, I watched there were both. some animes. That, yeah, I watched both. There were some animes that I did watch, but they were like a lot of them were European anime, Japanese collaborations. So mm -hmm. in Finland, there's this really famous children's book series. Moomins? Moomins. Yeah, I know. The and... Moomins got really famous in Japan. Yeah, exactly. So Finland actually produced anime with a Japanese studio of the movements in the 90s. And like, that's the one cartoon every Finnish grew up with. The so movements. it's technically, it's it's an anime. Yeah, it's the movements. It's, uh, it's an anime, but it's also technically not because it, I, well, because it's, it is an anime, but it's not a pure anime since it's not a pure Japanese production, or it wasn't pure Japanese. I mean, technically it was, right? Because the Japanese handled all the animation and all that stuff. That's true. Yeah, they really did, uh, they really, you know, did the hard work. So in that sense, it's absolutely an anime. Mm -hmm. But it's also, like, it's very, the stories and uh, 
the way um, it's just not like the movements was just not like what you when you watch it it's like this is not the first thing I think of when I think of anime that's true that's fair it's like it's like a but it was it, it was kind of like Totoro from what I remember have you watched the uh, movements anime I've seen clips of it it feels a lot like Totoro yeah I, I agree well Miyazaki was very inspired by by the movements Oh, not the movement specifically, but by a lot of Scandinavian children. I mean, a lot of um, Miyaz Miyazaki's work is based on um, what do you call this? <laughs> oh, my 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 friend is one of the mods on the stream. Sorry, and he was like, "Can I get some pizza?" And he's like, "Never mind, it's pineapple pizza." <laughs> yeah, sorry, dude. <laughs> No, what was it saying? The Moomins... We're talking about... No, Miyazaki in general just is really inspired by, um... European... European yeah. stuff. Like, Earthsea... Well, I guess Earthsea isn't really a Miyazaki film. It's his son. Yeah, but um, Kiki's Delivery Service... Like... I, I... Whenever I watch Kiki's Delivery Service, I'm like, that's... That's Stockholm. Or it's that's like Sweden? a Swedish city. It's not set in Sweden, but it is... Um, heavily in inspired by um, Swedish uh, towns and cities. Got it. Okay, I didn't know that. The whole time I thought uh, it was yeah. I thought it was French. Mm. Mm. Thank, mm. thank you for no, following I, me to Dr. Swedish. <laughs> you say Swedish? Okay, okay. Now I know. The more you know. Um <laughs> freaking Yeah, okay, that's interesting. And your your main your primary um, influence, I'm guessing, is um, what's his name? Did Land Before Time? Did American Tale? Uh, no, not really. My biggest influence is The Lion King. Oh, really? Hands down, yeah. Who's who's the animator who who did all of those though? I forgot his name. Um. Okay. So with the uh, with the Lion King, a lot of the the Lion King had an interesting production. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, we we still haven't gotten to your origin story. <laughs> so sorry, but uh, oh yeah, I forgot. I'll yeah, go... I was ta we were talking about that. <laughs> I'll explain. I'll after. quickly say some. I'll quickly say something about the Lion King. Okay. And then we will go back to to you. So the Lion King had an interesting production because it was not considered a, um like a it was considered like a B movie by Disney while it was in production. Mm -hmm. And while The Lion King was in production, Pocahontas was also in production. Because at the time, Walt Disney Animation Studios was technically divided in two. It was actually divided completely in two. So they were making they would make two movies simultaneously. Oh really? And one side the, yeah, one side the studio would make one and the other would make the other. I didn't know that. I thought um, it was divided according to television and movies. No, well that television was a completely separate studio. Got it. But for the feature animation it was divided in two because it was the only way they could uh release so many movies back to back because back then with 2d and everything it would take like five years or four years to make a movie uh -huh. so the only way they could keep making you know a movie every year or every two years was by making two movies simultaneously and while one is released the other one is still in production uh -huh. and so while the Lion King was being made, Pocahontas was being made in the, the other the studio. And because uh, Pocahontas had uh, Glenn Keane as the directing animator, uh, it was about a princess, like a classic musical, yeah. in the eyes of Disney. It was... Um, it, the Lion King was looked down upon. Um, nobody thought of The Lion King as uh, as a serious movie. It was gonna be like the oh the happy kill children's movie with like talking lions. And at one point they were cons Disney thought about the, the makers of The Lion King thought about you know, having The Lion King be a documentary, like an animated documentary mm -hmm. instead of uh, you know a musical. They eventually went with the musical route. And they actually had a very low budget in comparison to Pocahontas. That makes sense. Like, I feel, I guess a lot because Lion King doesn't use as complicated 
or like as detailed animation as but you know because pocahontas has like you know the the colors in the wind yeah. sequence and you know you gotta animate each single one of those like leaves that are flowing exactly and stuff yeah 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 it's sort of visible you can see it once you pay attention mm -hmm. but yeah no so disney completely expected that pocahontas would be the oscar winning um heavy you know lucrative period piece with uh with mel gibson as the lead role and they were like expecting Pocahontas to be the next Beauty and the Beast, mm -hmm. um, the next like heavy hitter. And The Lion King came out first and blew out everyone's expectations completely because mm -hmm. it became, the, at the time, the highest grossing film of all time, the uh, highest grossing animated film of all time. Uh huh. And then they released Pocahontas and it was like. And it meh. bombed. <laughs> it didn't bomb, but it was meh. And it didn't win an Oscar like this. That's fair. Did it deserve an Oscar? Debatable. Maybe for music and animation, but there's no like award for just in the Oscars for just animation, unfortunately. Uh -huh. But yeah, no, so that's the um, interesting story of The Lion King. And you were asking who were the big animators in The Lion King. Well, there weren't that many big animators because all the big ones were in Pocahontas. Glenn Keane was in Pocahontas. Um, yeah, so on and so forth. But Lion King did have, uh, I think, Tony Bancroft, who, Tony who was designer of Pumbaa. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I follow him on Instagram, too. Exactly, he's really big on Instagram. And also, uh, James Baxter. Mm -hmm. He was the animator of Rafiki. Mm -hmm. And he went on to, you know, he's now like the head of animation. He's a fan favorite. He's he's referenced at Adventure Time. Glenn Keane? No, um, James Baxter. James Baxter. Wait, well, he's referenced at Adventure Time. Yeah, there's a horse that it's standing on the ball. It goes, James Baxter. And the joke is, it's the horse is named James Baxter. He's voiced by James Baxter. And he's also animated by James Baxter. Because... Oh, so that's the whole that's the whole joke. <laughs> yeah. But like Pendleton Ward was such a huge fan of uh, James Baxter that he was like, hey, I'm going to give you a cameo and a pencil. You're going to be a horse. So I need you to animate a horse and do the voice acting. That's interesting. Yeah. I didn't. And one last animator shout out from The Lion King. One of my personal favorites is uh, Andreas Deja. Uh huh. He, he was the design, he was the character designer and animator of Scar. And also Jafar, uh, he he is like the ultimate like Disney villain master. Disney villain master, for sure. Yeah. Did you guest on too? No, I don't think so. Okay. I think in Beauty and the Beast he was Clock Coxworth. Okay. But yeah, so now basically the Lion King, that whole visual stuff, most influential, to me. and those animators that I just listed are some of my favorite okay, animators. Because I thought yeah. it was, this whole time I thought it was Don Bluth. I mean, Don Bluth came later and he's still influential to me, but I wouldn't say he's the most influential. Got it. Yeah, yeah got it. Yeah, because you, your work really does feel like it has that Don Bluth kind of kind of style, kind of flair to it, you know what I mean? That's true. Oh, like, sick. the way he drew dinosaurs is very influential to me. Uh-huh. Um, Anyway, so now tell me about your story. I, you were you grew up with uh, anime and you were drawing anime, right? As a kid. Yeah. So I mean, it was it, a lot of it was just like. How do you say this? I was just I just really liked you know. Anime and drawing and like dragons and you know, I really liked Godzilla. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the time I would draw like. I don't know if you could see my screen. You probably if you're watching the stream, you can. But I, I used to just draw like Godzilla, like um, like this, two triangles. Wait, hold up. It's the stream on. It's on Twitch. Twitch. Yeah. Okay, where's the link? Uh, it's Twitch.tv/slash Dinosaur Comics. Okay, give me a second. Yeah. But here, the stream can see it. it. Looks like this, and then I would do something like that to make Godzilla. Okay. Yeah, 
Do you see it? So cute. I see yeah, it. I, I, see that's, it. I think that's how I used to draw, right? And I would draw buildings like, like that. And you know, just, just, yeah. I just like to draw. And, if, and you know, I, I got better over time. But then it was like very slow. I didn't understand how to practice, and art was heavily discouraged by my by my parents and stuff. So it's not Dang, like really. Yeah. So it's not like I had like a lot of um, what do you call this? I wasn't encouraged to really practice or like hone it. So I was like, okay. Mm. So I didn't. But you I, still did. Well, I did later, like very recently. Before, before, like literally, if you compare like my drawings from the beginning of last year to now, it's like really insane. Cause I under, I have a better idea of how to practice. Hmm. Yeah, and get feedback. Dang, dude. Yeah. I thought you've been drawing your whole life. I mean, I I did on and off through high school, but it's like it's not it's not mm. something I took very seriously till recently. Got it. Just like a hobby. Yeah. Wow. That's insane. I was very much like encouraged by my family. That's to, good. To draw. Yeah, yeah, I'm very happy. Um, I couldn't have asked it any other. Yeah, no, my um, parents. My parents wanted me to be a fucking, you know, like doctor or whatever. <laughs> and yeah, um, I have um, my grandma is a, is an artist. Mm -hmm. Uh, she's done paintings and exhibits in her local town. And my dad even took up painting for a while, to be honest. Mm -hmm. And then my, in my mom's side of the family, there's just a lot of appreciation for me. For art? Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, well, I don't... Yeah. I, there aren't, like, a lot of artists in, like, my family, so... That's probably mm -hmm. why. And the ones that got into music were like seen as like failures and stuff. <laughs> oh. Mainly because like you know they try to like. So unfortunate. I mean yeah. they they try to be like in a rock band, which isn't, you know, the most lucrative career. But hey, you know, this probably you know maybe if they had some encouragement, maybe their dreams wouldn't just be dreams. You feel me? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, that's what. Uh, I mean, it's uh. It's a little bit of both. It's uh, you. You need to encourage someone to to follow their dreams, their passions. Yeah. And you know, if they're if they have talent in something, even if it's just minor, it should be you know encouraged. Well, yeah, because uh, it's it's not at like least for, talent is just a starting point, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. At the very least, for like. Uh, yeah, yeah. To get to have a hobby or to. Because it is good for you, in my opinion. To have oh yeah, no, def definitely, mentally. yeah. Um, but also at the same time, like, if um, if you have, you know, passion to turn your art or any like skill into a career, mm -hmm. then you know you need to be. It's it's important to have a re realistic expectations and a realistic self-awareness of your ability oh yeah of course yeah just because i draw a white dot on a canvas every day doesn't mean that i'm gonna be a top selling yeah. modern modern artist avant-garde kind of person yeah yeah actually absolutely yeah i think my uh my the stream on my side because my photoshop crashed again so can you give me a sec yeah, you, you'll just have to like restart your stream on <laughs> on Discord again. Okay. Let me see. Yeah, dang. Is, is that, does that happen all the time? It, uh, yes and no. Sometimes my Photoshop crashes, but lately it's like I noticed it's happened mainly while like I'm streaming on Discord. Oh, got it. Dang. Dang, and you have a gaming computer, too. <laughs> there yeah. we go. Yeah. Alright, there. That should be fixed now. Alright. Ah, oh, perfect. <laughs> now everyone can see my Utah. <laughs> Hello. Hey, kids. Here's my Utah Raptor. Here's Look my... at it. <laughs> hey there, children. Well, yeah. Hey, children. 
I think I think that's very interesting that you were heavily encouraged, and that's no, that's a, that's a good thing too. Especially, I mean, you're still in school, and you're still growing, like, you know, learning, and you're you're doing um film production right now, right? No, I'm doing media studies. Media studies, but right yeah. now you are like in the middle of producing a film, right? Or a mockumentary. Yeah, yeah, a mockumentary, but um, it's just uh, it's a student production. Uh -huh. I'm, I can't say much about it at the moment, so. Got it. I'm, yeah, so I can't. Uh, actually, I can't talk about it at all. I've done it, unfortunately. Oh. Other than saying, I'm making a, I'm making a mockumentary with uh, for school. Got it. Got it. Okay. But um, yeah, you. I mean, you've done also like a bunch of other like stuff. Like you know, I know you have your student films and all that too. Yeah, I yeah I have. Uh, so right now I'm studying a, like a BA in media. Mm -hmm. Because um, even though I studied already two years in Canada, film production and animation, it wasn't a degree, it was a diploma. So I'm doing this to just get a degree, really. Mm -hmm. um, because it will increase my chances, for example, if I want to move to North America for animation jobs, it's going to be easier to get a green card or whatever. I have a degree. Uh huh. I didn't know that. So like, the process of getting a green card for filmmaking is a lot stricter. It, yeah, it, just in general, immigration for any like film-related gig mm -hmm. is extremely difficult because um, it's practically freelance. Um, you know, most governments, and I think uh, the U.S. and Canada have the same thing. That if you're gonna move somewhere and you want to get a working visa, you need a sponsorship from a company that's gonna hire you at least for you know a few years, so many years. Got it. And that is that is kind of difficult or impossible when it comes to, for example, mm -hmm. film and animation, where you work for one project for a few months and then you work for this other project mm -hmm. for half a year, and you're 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 doing gig work, kind of. It's like a mix between gig and uh, professional work. Well, Got it's professional it. work, but in a gig work stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so Sounds that's stressful. why you know you can't rely you can't rely on uh, company sponsorship when it comes to immigration. Mm -hmm. If you work in film or animation, you kind of need to have uh, need to find other ways, such as. I don't know. Uh, like it, just in general, like it will be easier for you if you have a degree, mm -hmm. because then you won't be at least like your application won't be thrown away. Got it. Got it. Wait, why is the on stream? Looks like uh, it's Discord. Oh, I don't know what happened. I guess I I got out of your stream for whatever reason. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what happened. Now the kids, now the kids can enjoy my Utah Raptor. But um, yeah. So like, what is like your current experience in film and animation? I only have um, student experience, really. Uh huh. I have done an internship for one animation studio while I was in high school. Which one? Uh, Rovio, the creators of Angry Birds. Like, like the movie or the game? <laughs> the game. Oh, okay. But uh, it's a Finnish company. It's actually a Finnish brand. I didn't know that. Yeah. So it's a Finnish brand, and Rovio is the is the company behind uh -huh. it. And in the mid 2010s, they had big animation studio and. Helsinki mm -hmm. because they had huge aspirations of becoming the next uh, you know Disney they actually kind of, yeah they actually kind of wanted to be the next Disney but in Europe and so they built this huge animation studio they were like right like they were still writing off the success from the mobile games and expanding to making animated series and webtoons and more games so whatever um, happened to that they, it, they, honestly, I don't know what went wrong, but my guess is that they relied too much on 
But they, they were like too they, much on Angry Birds? Yeah, because they were making TV shows, and TV show animations, but they were only Angry Birds TV shows. Mm-hmm. And they were they made a they, they funded a movie. They funded a movie animated by a Hollywood animation studio. It was a movie about Angry Birds. They made more games, they were all Angry Birds. And eventually people just got tired of Angry Birds. Yeah, I'm pretty tired of Angry Birds. The movie came out way too late. Like, it came out yeah. what? How many years after the mobile game came out? Yeah, like five, six years, which is way too long for you know, a mobile game. Exactly. Nobody's going to remember a mobile game from like five, six years. I mean, I, I, I remember what mobile games I remember. I remember Plants vs. Zombies. And yeah, the... but would you watch a movie about it? <laughs> like five, six years later? Yeah, no. <laughs> no. Would you pay? Would you play? You know, top dollar to see Plants vs. Zombies, the animated movie. The animated on, three and three D on the big screen. Ah, uh, no. You're right. Yeah. No, that's what that's what killed Rovio, unfortunately. And now the company is way smaller. Mm-hmm. They they don't do. You know. They, they, I think they now found the right path. They are no longer about, you know, trying to be the next Disney. Yeah. They're more just a small, you know, game studio at the moment. Uh huh. And yeah, I wonder if they're like, I wonder if they're still doing only Angry Birds. Hmm. That's the big question. I think so. I haven't they heard have... of the stu- of anything else like the studio has done. I mean, there's a sequel to Angry Birds also coming out. The game, like the the movie, that that came out already ages ago. It did. Angry Birds two, yeah. Hold up. I don't believe you. I thought it. That's thought... true. <laughs> it came out in twenty nineteen. Yeah, it came out ages ago. What? Okay. The Angry and Birds movie two. So it bombed in the box office. So. There's not gonna be any more Angry Birds movies. I'm pretty sure. Did it bomb? They made they made back their budget. The budget was yeah, 65. I... They made 154 million. Yeah, but um, you have to take into account that marketing mm-hmm. um, is usually twice the budget. Or it's the so like take the budget times it by two, and you got the full budget of the movie because uh, marketing is an extra like. Hundreds of millions. So they made about twenty-four million dollars off this movie. <laughs> it's not the biggest. <laughs> yeah, I know. Story. Could have been way better. Let's see. I'm like yeah. reading the reviews real quick. It's like they have an it's all-star actually... cast. Like holy shit. Yeah, I mean, critically, it was liked more than uh, the previous one. But so, it just didn't. It wasn't a heavy hit. Box. I think this is, we're at the point where it's like. Okay, you know what the kids want? They want a Fortnite movie. They want a... Okay, the kids want a Fortnite movie. They want a Five Nights at Freddy's movie, still. Um, what else do they want? They want... What's, what's, what's popular Minecraft. with the kids right now? Yeah, um, they want to... Well, we already have, like, a Minecraft... This The thing on Netflix, story mode. Really? Yeah, it's a... It's, uh... You remember Bandersnatch? The... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, one? Yeah, okay, so it's like a choose your own... Yeah, I think that's really cool. I think, I think yeah. there is a much bigger avenue for that to happen. I I think this is something I've thought about. Like, would be an interesting experiment if um, you basically have a movie theater, right? You're, you're in a movie, and the whole movie is a, kind of like a choose your own adventure thing, but the audience votes. They that's has that's that been done for? Right. Yeah, really, like way back, like in the twenties and thirties. The twenties and thirties. Yeah. Yeah, but you could bring them back. We have so much technology now. Like you have the, you, you know, you give a pad to like ev- each person going to the theater, and then each person votes, or they, I guess they could vote on their. Mo- this is like the only time like a mobile phones encourage for, you know, yeah, studio yeah, viewing yeah. or whatever, right? Just so you could see like the different things happen. I think mm. I think it would be very interesting just to like see that, what could happen. Yeah, that would be interesting. And you'd also um, make like a lot it, of money. I agree. It should be tried again. Like, at least at a theme park. Like, I could imagine that being fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, at least, or, yeah, at least at a theme park, I agree. Absolutely. Like, that sounds like a fun theme park. Mm-hmm. 
But yeah, no, I, I, I remember it's a fun thing that you learn in film school that uh, in the past, like we like to think of 3D, 4D, it's like gimmicks as like a modern day thing, but they actually date back to like the early 19. I mean, I didn't, uh, wasn't early 3D movies using the, the, the red and blue glasses, which is really distracting? <laughs> yeah, but like also, for example, do you remember when Birdman came out? Birdman. Is that the... What's his name? Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton movie. Yeah. What about it? So, the whole gimmick of the movie, or like what the movie was praised for, is that it all looks like it's taken in one shot. Uh-huh. Like, it's all like one take. No editing. No nothing. The whole movie. Oh, there, yeah. There is editing, but it's... But it's hidden. You, you don't see it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's and also supposed to be like went. one seamless movie. Exactly. There, I remember. That's what it was. Yeah, that's what it was praised for, and that's what like people were like, "Oh, this hasn't been done before. Right? It's just so cool, so novel." It's actually been done before. Alfred Hitchcock did it. Uh -huh. He he made a whole movie where it's like, it, it looks like there's no editing. I mean, you can tell it's so because the technology and. Um, and the setups aren't as, I wouldn't like to say as creative, but as advanced as in Birdman. Mm -hmm. But like the gimmick nonetheless existed. No, I, I, yeah, no, I, see, I see what you mean. Yeah. I mean, 3D as a gimmick has been around for like a long time. I think it peaked in like the late 2000s. Yeah. When every movie had like a 3D. Avatar. Yeah, Avatar was probably like the peak of 3D movies. Yeah. And you had other ones again, like Trans. I remember really enjoying Transformers in 3D. That was like a lot of fun. Uh, what else? But other than that, like it, I haven't, I haven't seen a 3D film. Like I feel like I think the trend like just died. Yeah, it did. Um, one like funny 3D story I had. This, this one time my parents bought my sister a Barbie movie okay. that came with 3D glasses. You could actually watch the Barbie movie in 3D on your home TV. It's kind of hype. So, it's, I, I remember watching, it was Barbie and the uh, Magic of the Pegasus or something like that. Uh -huh. and, it was like, and that movie actually kind of slept. Not gonna lie. Mm -hmm. But I remember like it it was really weird because there was a normal mode and a 3D mode. But the 3D mode, it was only 3D for some scenes. Mm -hmm. And the side character in the movie is, uh, is a baby polar bear. And if you put the 3D mode on, like every 15 minutes, the, the polar bear would appear with like 3D glasses on sign. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's like when you had to put the 3D glasses on to watch the movie in 3D. And last for like five minutes or something like that i don't know when actions and then the 3d ended told to then the polar bear would come with like the 3d glasses mm -hmm. okay I, th I think i remember the movie you're talking about because um i remember watching it in class once like you know like we, we, every week we'd I have like the, bring the vhs to school oh I, I saw the movie i didn't see the 3d version but, uh, oh, yeah, 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 okay. I yeah. mean, the, the 3D version was only in the DVD, so this is a VHS. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure there could be, like, a VHS version that's in 3D. I don't know if VHS is advanced enough. I mean, all you gotta do is get the red and blue glasses, right? That's true. Yeah, yeah um, well, I'm trying to think. 3D my 3d film experiences honestly and this doesn't sound kind of sad and i feel i, I i'm, I'm kind of bummed i didn't get to experience this i never saw avatar in 3d no i no. honestly it was never that it was never that really yeah i mean i i like the cgi yeah but the 3d i didn't find that impressive really i re i was yeah you didn't think you were there <laughs> no <laughs> No, um, but maybe it was the movie theater I was in in Mexico at the time. Uh, uh, no, but even then, like that was a really good movie theater in Mexico too. Watched it, so like, there's no uh -huh. excuse. 
Yeah, I don't think the 3D. I didn't think the 3D was that. Interesting. Okay, because maybe maybe it would have been great if I. Saw it. Everyone I, saw I it talked to as a kid was absolutely like amazing. Well, I wasn't even a kid. I was like I was like 13 when it came out, and everyone was amazed. Okay, by I it. do. Re Here's the thing. There was so much hype for the 3D and Avatar. It was like almost like a peer pressure because I remember vividly not being that impressed by the 3D. Like it was cool, but it wasn't that impressive. Mm -hmm. But then I would people would ask me how was it? I would be like, oh the three D, it was so cool. It was it was really cool just because that was what everyone else was saying. I didn't want to be like the 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 one guy who's like, no, it's not that cool. Mm -hmm. Oh, so you were just like, yeah, yeah, it was really great. It changed my life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think that happened a lot with that. at least because there was so much hype for it. Uh huh. That uh, you kind of were forced to, you know, like you, like it was like, uh, like in a psychological way, like you were convinced that, oh, this is great. This is the greatest movie of all time, Avatar. Ah. That's fair. Yeah. It, it's kind of amazing. Like, uh, like I don't, like most people today, me included, don't think Avatar is the greatest movie ever, but you gotta give it credit for like, Building that hype culture. Yeah, no, I, I mean, a move. I enjoyed it. I mean, the hype culture at that when the movie it came out, two thousand eight. What what else was super hype in two thousand eight? Inception was really hype in two thousand eight. Yeah, Dark Knight. Oh yeah, Dark Knight too. Uh, two thousand eight was a good year, I think, for movies in general. Two thousand eight was a good year, not for the economy, but for movies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> not for the economy, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree. We don't talk about it. We don't talk about <laughs> that. I'm very fortunate to have been okay during the, you know, the yeah, the economic crash of 2008, 2009. Yeah. But you know, because I was a kid, you know, my parents were fine. Although a lot of people I knew lost their jobs, which is you know, damn shame. Uh, but hey, we recovered, and then all oh, now we're in a second economic downturn. But hey. It's getting better because everyone's getting vaccinated and the world's kind of turning back to normal. Yay! Yay! At least, at least everyone in the country with the most vaccines. That's true. Yeah. Because it's um, unevenly distributed, unfortunately. Unfortunately, yeah. How how has um like you know like COVID like affected your um you know just your life in general like. Your ability to, uh, I'm sure your ability to draw has gotten like you know much better because you have more time to stay indoors and just practice right yeah yeah that's true uh, artistically it's been good for me because it gave me the time and motivation to do art and create my Instagram uh, through which I met you and mm -hmm. a bunch of other cool people um, and overall it hasn't hit terribly hard this whole pandemic mm -hmm. uh, fortunately i've been very lucky same um it's only now that it's starting to take a toll like uh like mentally you know, the lack of it yeah well also physically because i don't i don't do any exercise so mm -hmm. it's now like like a year a little over a year of not doing exercise is starting to take a toll are you guys not allowed to ex you know, go out exercise outside in finland well, I live in the Netherlands now, but uh, yeah, people can go exercise outside. It's okay. just that I... Yeah. I'm lazy. It's, well, <laughs> well, it's also, you know, the Netherlands is not the prettiest weather. Uh -huh. It's uh, winter. Winter here, it's like mostly rain. So it's not really nice uh, mm -hmm. you know, outdoor exercise. Oh, yeah. It's very like gloomy and wet and gross. Yeah. And your shoes will like get water in them. I feel yeah. it. But I have made, but there are people who still do exercise outdoors, and I have major respect for them. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. Agreed, agreed. Um, let's see. We got, actually, we actually got five minutes left. Um, is there anything that, you know, you want to talk about real quick? That, you know, an issue that maybe you want to bring up? Or you can always bring up next time. I always bring you back on. This is a short one just because I got, a, I got stuff to do today. Mm. Yeah, no, I have nothing really to 
to add to the discourse, to the the conversation. Um, yeah, hmm. no, me neither. I know I wanted, to, I wanted to I wanted to talk about social media and paleontology with you, but we can we can do that next time. Oh yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, let's see. But yeah, um, guys, I'm sorry that this one's gonna be a short one. But um, I appreciate everyone who came on to hang out. Um, Yokim, how can people reach out to you if they want to look at your art or talk to you? Okay, um, everyone, you can um, if you like the stuff that you've seen me draw, then follow me on Instagram at Utyranus. Utyranus like the dinosaur, but instead of with a Y, it's with a J because my last name is Yuki. That sounds like Utyranus. So. And it's written with a J. So look up Utyranus with a J on Instagram and you'll find me. You can also find me on Twitter with the same handle. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you are uh, a Facebook person, I even have a Facebook, uh, Paleo Art of Joachim Muti. Um, and yeah, that's where you can follow me. Also check out my store, uh, utyranus.bigcartel.com. You want to buy some sweet saber tooth cat and slot stickers? Get a sweet, More will sweet come merch. soon. More merchandise diversity will come soon as well. Nice. All right. Well, anyway, thank you everybody for popping by. Um, yeah, I'm gonna head off right now. Anyway, talk to you guys back on Wednesday. Peace, y'all.